Welcome to another installment of Tag Me In, where the triple threat brain trust tag over the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of professional wrestling. I, of course, am the unofficially official Lip Dizzle, joined with none other than the less than stealthy unicorn himself, straight out of the factory, ST. Ray Shaw. I'm not mad at it. Yes. I'm not mad at that. I'm okay with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And how's everybody doing tonight? Mm. Doing all right. Doing good. Doing good. And of course, ladies of the AEW verse, the heartthrob yeah. of the I. WC, Mr. ASMR himself. Hey, hey, for this episode, mm. no, 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 mm, no, 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 mm, no. Mm, no. Mm, for this mm, episode, mm. I'm going to let him gimmick in French just a little bit. Oh. He's not Jaeger, bombastic. That man down there, that man right here, that is absolute. Oh. Jaeger, Ooh. bombastic. Ooh. Well Ooh. then, well then, well then, uh, ex- excuse my French then. <clears throat> Ladies of the IWC, Mr. ASMR himself, absolute Jaeger bombastic, so fantastic that Scoot had to change his name, gimmick, gimmick in French on the fly, and oh, had me fly. bring it back, back. So I could reintroduce him the right way. Matter of fact, fact, Jaeger bombastic. Mm. Yes, that's that's beautiful. I, I very much appreciate that. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> and we'll oh, definitely yeah. get into the uh, the absolute portion of AEW when we jump into that. Uh, Scoot, you already informed. There is no real. I, news, thinking, I don't think I really saw any news, really. Like, I felt like I might have, but I don't remember how important it was or not. So, mm-hmm. if I remember, I can always bring it up next week. So, yeah, true that. Um, mm. But it, it, it don't matter because what, what did matter was night one of Fighter oh, Fest. Well, A- oh. AEW Elite General Manager is out the little mobile game. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I haven't tried it. I, I haven't gotten to it, it yet. I haven't played it yet, but it is out. I'm 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 gonna have to give it a shot. Um, I might I might be downloading it as we're speaking about this. So of course, uh, uh, Jaeger, is mm-hmm. your device orange? Like Cassidy, baby. <laughs> no, no. See, that's why I gave him the name Absolute. Ah. Because what color is that? Goddamn FTW title. <laughs> you absolutely right. <laughs> Interesting. So we could just get right into it. You're right. Um, see, Fighter the, Fest. Fighter Fest night one. Um, the first match, I can it, it's funny because we we pra- we praised the uh, the build up to it just a little bit, and I completely forgot that this match was on here, but um John Moxley defending his IWGP United States Championship against none other than Machine Gun Carl Anderson. Uh, two things. Yeah, you, One, know, you know what I'm saying? You got to throw it up, got to cock it, then you got to. And you got to sweep it. <laughs> um, two things about this match. One, Carl Anderson is. Uh, was one again, and I'm, I'm glad that you were able to see it on, on AEW, but he was just heavily underused and heavily underappreciated in WWE. I don't know how many times I can say that. Um, well, two, so okay. let's let's go ahead and just really put it in perspective. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I know this is the AEW show, but how many of these people who are on this roster can we say this about? Uh, there. <laughs> you got to I mean, I mean, mm, you're right. looking at looking at looking at Fighter Fest Night One alone, mm-hmm. we're talking about Moxley, <clears throat> Anderson, 
Miro, uh, who else? Uh, I'm pretty sure I mean, there's other people. I mean, they Christian were used, Cage. right? I was about to say Matt Hardy and Christian Cage. Like, so there are a lot of people who are from WWE that are now on AEW that weren't used right. True. But, Truth. But once again, I also blame the fact that they need to break out that whole a tag team can't wrestle singles for some reason. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's what they really need to break out of, and that's what I'm glad AEW does. With all that their tag teams. A, that if yeah. a tag team person gets injured, because, I mean, look at look at Top Flight. <clears throat> With Darius being injured, they would have both been off TV. Yes. You Dar- know, Dante when, Martin uh, is killing it. And he's killing it. The only tag team that they really didn't do that with was the Usos when Jay Uso kind of became the breakout star. But mm-hmm. that's what the first time in what years that they did that. Mm-hmm. So just seeing the fact that because you know they was even saying too, yeah, Anderson is primarily a tag team wrestler, but his singles accomplishments are pretty good. Yes. So absolutely. Hundred percent. Um, and and the second thing that I had about this match um, was I was wrong. I was wrong about Wild Thing, and it took the fans being in attendance fully in in hundred percent capacity to change my mind on it. Because maybe they, if and, I hear it next week, because I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> uh, it. It's it's because like the fans. It, it's it's almost like a fan interaction thing because when Wild Thing hits and everybody like they say it in unison, they say Wild Thing and it just it popped every time and I was like, yeah, okay, all right. So I, I'm not I'm not mad at it and it's just it's almost hard to to do Moxley wrong because when he walks out, especially when he walks out with Eddie Kingston, it's I. And you know what? Again, shout out to Mox for for pushing the fan out the way and not giving a fuck. (laughs) Because he shoved the fuck out of him when he was in his way. He really did. He really did. So, hey, Mox, keep keeping it, keeping it going. Like he, you know, even if you cheer, he's like, "Hey, get the fuck out my way." You and my you you, (laughs) and to and to would you bring that up? There was another underlining. Thing about this episode, every fan who was sitting in the front row, stop putting your beer on the floor. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, it's about to get kicked. <laughs> yeah. I saw like at least two or three different people get their beers yep. kicked. And it was like, stop putting your beer down there on the floor. <laughs> yeah, for real. Now, you, you, you would think they would know better, but you would you think, know, but maybe they. Yeah. Dang, it ain't my beer, so it don't fucking matter. Won't but, be mine. <laughs> but yeah, th- this this match was was definitely a good one. Uh, it looks like New Japan is just gonna keep this fucking strap on on Moxley for a while uh, because I don't know. And and you know what and we we de- you know what yeah we're, we're gonna get into the after this match too because okay. there, I don't I don't know if there's a better place to slide it other than this part let's talk about both of those segments after this but mm, um, yeah. but just to jump forward Moxley won obviously because we just stated it but um, a good showing by by Carl Anderson one his fucking cutter off the second rope so is yes lovely is lovely. Yes. Uh, I just I want to see them wrestle more in AEW. Like whether it be tag team, mm-hmm. whether it be singles, I don't give a shit. Just put them on TV more. Which I mean, I guess they will, judging by the uh, the five on five that's going to happen. But we'll get to that as later as well. But Moxie goes over, he retains. But we have to talk about his now next competitor, which will be a um, a revisit to a previous feud with him and Lance Archer. For the um, I, I, IWGP United States Championship, so Lance Archer had a vignette with him and Jake Roberts, basically calling out Mox 
saying that he deserves mm-hmm. his rematch. He deserves, you know, this this to happen again. And mm-hmm. he, wants, he, he wants to finish, but he wants to put Mox down. And of course, they're doing they want he wants to do it in a Texas death match. No problem there. Yeah. They want to revisit that. And Mox responded saying, you know, you want to put me down. You want to end my career. You want this to happen? Fine. You know, you you are uh, you're a Texas born, Texas bred. But at the end of it, you are going to be Texas dead. Dead. Um, so and this is where, Scoot, I, 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 guess, I guess you pretty much saw what I saw because I agree with you on this. And it's the fact that they keep putting Lance Archer in all these situations, yet he mm-hmm. comes out the loser in all of them. So, so I'm assuming that you and see what Lance better Archer way to to put Mox down? I, and what better way, and especially doing in a Texas death match, what better way to give Mox his uh, paternity leave than to beat the shit out of him in a Texas death match? Hmm. Hmm. That's, that and, and and it's happening next week. Next week. So th- <laughs> uh-huh. this this is why I lean more towards this actually being uh, Moxley's send off because of the fact that one he just had a defense and now you're going to defend it again this soon. This does mm-hmm. make me believe that this is going to be the person to take this title off of Mox. Now. Uh, not to interrupt you right quick, I will mm-hmm. say this personally. If Archer does not win this match, this is going to hurt him. Yeah. I agree. Um, this is going to hurt him. He's been coming out. He's been squashing just about everybody else. His final match. That losing hurt. the title matches. Yeah. Yeah. And Well, besides losing the title matches, but yeah, he's been... On such a roll, on such a win streak, Mox has been. I don't know. He just got his first win in months. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, then let me propose this because Jaeger, you are the uh, the most seasoned New Japan correspondent. <laughs> sure. So now with mm-hmm. this, do you, does this move to make Lance Archer the new United States champion? Does this move make sense? It would, as far as New Japan's like partnership with AEW, it would bring more relevance into their field as well, Like as far as for AEW crossing over to New Japan. And Archer, let's be honest, he's been bulldozing people, and it would be better for him to have legitimate feuds with people while he's got a belt on. It wouldn't really make sense if he didn't win this match and then started wrestling, I guess, more New Japan based people or just showed up on strong or something. And Okay. Yeah. Like I see it making more sense if he wins this. I hope he wins this. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I didn't expect you hoping. Well, I mean I mean nothing against Mox. I mean we all love Mox, but True. I I mean for uh, continuity wait, purposes. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Scoot doesn't love Mox. <laughs> yeah, I remember. That's, that's I mean, familiar. wild, wild thing compared to his little badass hard rock instrumental was eh, for uh, me as remember, well. I always had a thing. I always loved Mox's promos, but it's something about the wrestling that just you know. Scoot's but, only turned around on the Bucks so far. We'll, we'll, <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Yes. You're right. The Bucks is the only one I have turned around. Two thirds of us like Mox. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, Mox goes over, and so they set up his next match, which of course is against Lance Archer for night two of Fighter Fest. So Mox is the only one that's pulling so far that's pulling double duty on Fighter Fest, both nights mm. one and night two. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I honestly do think Lance Archer does take this because of the fact that Mox clearly just defended a title and now going mm-hmm. in to try to defend it again. So we'll see. Is this but, is this a uh, lip dizzle predicting this or is it that crown predicting this? Oh no, 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 no. I'm just I'm just a mild mannered wrestling fan here. Uh okay. 
Uh, now, now when all out comes around, that might be a different story. I, I uh, can't look. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I can't. I can't control the crown, but you know, with if 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 a pay per view happens to happen, you know, it just I, look. It may happen on this whole AEW podcast, but look, hey, just mild mannered here, just regular old Lip okay. Beasley. <laughs> but okay. from from one retaining a title to another person who surprisingly, well, not surprisingly, is completely over winning a title. Brian Cage defending his FTW championship against none other than absolute Ricky Starks. Okay. This, this is one thing, and we, and we talked about it on NXT um, when we talked about fans being more in attendance. This is mm-hmm. the one thing that that's going to that that's that's this is one of the reasons why I'm very much anticipating watching Raw and SmackDown mm-hmm. is for situations like this because Ricky Starks. Nobody would would have guessed that Ricky Stark, We knew we like Ricky Starks on our own. Yes, but mm-hmm. to just imagine how over Ricky Starks is like you talk about. Darby Allen, you talk about Sammy Guevara, you talk about Heyman, Adam Page. At this point, right now, the way that they responded to him, and it could just been because it was Texas, but the fact that Ricky Stark's pop and ovation rivaled that of Hangman, Adam Page, is fucking crazy. Well, I mean, not only that, but let's fast forward in the match. They cheered when the finish happened. Yeah. When Hobbs yeah. hit, uh, when Hobbs hit Cage with the belt and Ricky hit that spear, they mm-hmm. were like they went bananas. Yeah, and I was sitting here like I didn't know Starks was that over. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and of course now I I completely assume and so th- this is where they did like. They swerved me once and they swerved me again because last week they swerved us with, you know, Ricky Starks coming out with security and not coming out with Team Taz. And it seemed like he was Mm going to depart from Team Taz and basically have his own thing being like the hill with Team Taz being probably the pseudo faces in this. But you get this and you get the whole thing where Team Taz actually in unison outside of Brian Cage turn on Brian Cage. The one thing that everybody predicted but they found a way to do it to where they had us think something completely different in just one segment mm-hmm. to go back and do the same thing that we assumed was going to happen. Yeah. AW. <clears throat> they found a way to swerve the fans. Now, not only that, too, I mean, but I, well, now go ahead if you got something to say with this part, uh, Jaeger. Uh, to the surprise, or I mean, I'll I'll say that I wasn't exactly surprised. Okay, because I feel like I've been calling Maybe this either. for a little. I kinda... uh, exactly like. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've been calling this for a little bit that Taz was g- gonna turn on Brian Cage. Mm-hmm. That Brian Cage was gonna like just I don't know go his own direction or something or get kicked out of Team Taz or whatever or what have you. Mm. Um, I was sad to say a little underwhelmed by oh, by okay. how by how they handled the turn because you just had Taz on commentary just like I don't know kind of giddy about it but <laughs> I, I would have appreciated like an after match like little speech or something post from Taz oh, yeah. post beat down or some kind of like shit talk from Taz something after mm. the match not just a Kind walk off. Okay. Now, now well, I guess they, I, I guess they had, I guess they had so much show to fill that we ain't had time. Fair to uh, do it. You know, Homelander had to have his uh, segment, so you know, I could have, I could have gone without that. Unfortunately, That's... you know, some people, but but yeah, um, <laughs> only thing I, only, only thing I kind of dislike. Was the fact that um, you know Excalibur even said on commentary, "Hey, you know the FTW title is not a recognized title here, so 
you know, blah, 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 blah. Huh. And it was kind of like, yeah, he said it. And then that's when Taz was like, yeah, the title was never recognized. And that's how it always is. And that's how it, and that's how it should always stay. I so, didn't hear that. See, I, I wow. yeah, yeah, I must have spaced out there. It was like kind of towards the beginning-ish of the match, I want to say. Because uh, Excalibur said, yeah, this is a... I forgot what he called it. He said, this is a such and such, which means that this title isn't necessarily recognized by AEW. And then that's when Taz was like, well, that's how the FTW title has always been. And that's how it's always going to stay. Hmm. Okay. So, I, yeah, I don't agree. I I, I see now. Yeah. Now it's like, what's the point? What's the point? What's now? the point? Exactly. Mm. See, it's exactly. only faction recognized. I don't know. Which is stupid because I agree. Now, now at this point, because I'm thinking that you, because you, you clearly, you clearly have an opportunity to make this title mean something, especially with the pop that Ricky Starks got. He, he can clearly make this title something. Mm-hmm. And if you miss out on that, then that is a disservice to him, that title, and it's a missed opportunity for this whole situation, especially with the fact that Tony Khan clearly came on that fucking press conference and said that this title was going to be not only defended, but it was going to be basically like in rotation with the other titles. So Mm -hmm. uh, now, yeah, yeah, now I'm just like, now, now it's gonna make me not care about this whole situation. After I literally was just like over the moon with this whole thing. Like I said, maybe, maybe now with Ricky winning it, it could potentially, you know, change the minds. Mm-hmm. But they did. Well, like I said, Excalibur did say that in the match. Okay. Mm. Well, here, here's hoping for the best with this, Ricky. You got the power to do something with this. You, you. Like yes. honestly, you got star power. You can make that title what what Britt Baker is making her title now. So yeah, mm-hmm. do some shit with that. But <laughs> but Scoot did talk about Scoot and Jaeger talked about ye old Homelander here, and ironically enough, that was the next segment, but not until Tully Blanchard got his. Little interview. Oh, I love that little. I love this little segment. Mm-hmm. He he got he got his little interview and, but not without a nice little cameo from Powell and Powerful Santana and Ortiz, who uh, who talked their nice shit to good old Tully. Mm-hmm. Then you had Ortiz grab him. You had Santana pull out nice little crowbar, mm-hmm. and act like they was gonna hit him, but then they stopped. And clocked him on the head real nice and, and soft and said, ha, it's fake. So we know one thing. We respect our elders, so we know better. Get your boys. Get your boys. Get your boys. Get your boys. And Tully, like an old man would say, now, I'm going to get my boys. Now, this, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, this whole segment falls into what Jim Cornette has been saying. About what? now he see why Goldberg has security. <laughs> why? <laughs> why would there ever be a scenario where Tully would show up by himself? <laughs> yeah. Why would there be a scenario where Tully Bletchard is by himself without one of the members of FTR? At least one, you know? At, at, at least one. I mean, they even called that out but too. It's like you got a target on your back, and you're walking around here by yourself. Yeah, like I, I, I don't get it in in in, in any promotion. <laughs> the backstage area is the most dangerous area in wrestling, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> boy, you could be jumped, you could be beaten, hit with cars, threatened, mm-hmm. all of that. So the backstage area, nobody should be going alone. Nobody. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> you need yourself a backstage. And especially too, but then especially too, if you look at AEW's history of backstage assaults, almost everybody in that company has been assaulted backstage. Yeah. yeah. Damn there. And their families. <laughs> and, yeah. And their families. 
So <laughs> show up with people. <laughs> but yeah, I did love the segment. Just show up with people. Don't go, don't go alone backstage at AEW. Because at least if at least if you get jumped, you and your friend will get jumped together. But don't yeah. go by yourself. Yeah. Nah. And um speaking of like backstage segments, I just thought about it. We may have glossed over uh Andrade's little thing. Uh that was Or was that later? It was a little bit later. Oh, okay. It was a little bit later, but no, trust it was me. A little bit later. We're gonna talk about getting, that too because oh, yeah. that that was definitely a good one. But um oh, yeah. who 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 did who didn't have a problem following the rules was Cody because he went out to Jeez. the front stage, up front, mm-hmm. um, and he and he he was quite perturbed, so to mm-hmm. speak. Um, look, I get we uh, we 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 harp, we harp on Homelander a lot, but this was in Cody's wheelhouse, and I'm not mad at this because, again, Cody is good at showing passion. Mm-hmm. And ferocity mm-hmm. within his promos. So this was good. This this portion mm-hmm. when he came out, got on the um, got on the headset and start talking. Cool. Trying to defend Arn Anderson perfectly mm-hmm. fine, all very well. Got in the ring, got on the mic, start talking again. Little little much on that end, but then we got yeah. to uh, Malachi doing the same thing that he would do in WWE, but doing it better. At this point, and I like now. The way wait, 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 wait. Go ahead, go ahead, Scoop. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, now, the one thing I don't know if y'all paid attention, he did take away one thing from WWE. What's what, that? The suit? He, uh, no, the the eyes. Did y'all not pay attention to the eyes? Yeah, I no, yeah, yeah, eyes. Yeah. yeah, he had that last week. Mm-hmm. Well, that color, that cut, that white eye. Yeah, still represents when Buddy Murphy sacrificed his eye on the steel steps. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I'm, I'm I'm assuming you're gonna get into that too, Scoot. The Buddy Murphy thing that he called out Murphy on Twitter about it. Yeah, yeah. Mur- Murphy had uh had, had well, mentioned well, that about. Well, he called him by his real name. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. um, but yeah. So I think we. And with once uh once Murphy's ninety days complete, we might get Murphy in uh AEW. We might That'd be interesting to see. So but yeah, so that's why he so that's why I had to realize why that side of his face looks kind of damaged. That's because it's mm. still because of the whole steel step incident yeah. in mm. WWE. So they're they're, ta- yeah. they're, ta- they're taking trash and making it treasure. So I appreciate that. Basically. Um, but um, but with this, this situation, I I felt like we shouldn't have had them go at each other, like physically. It should have just stayed up. Yeah, should just say the promo on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause I it just it it put a blemish on that whole segment for me, because I I think you should keep Malachi looking strong and ominous at this point. To uh to where it's like you know hey Cody you're gonna yeah you I know you want a piece of me, but you're gonna do it on my terms on my time not necessarily looking like he's like a chicken shit hill or or being scared in some in certain situations yeah. but you know we already know you know what he brings to the table it's like you don't have to confront Cody you can do it when you know it's time for y'all to go at it so mm-hmm. you know they'll they'll fix it this is I mean I'm pretty sure Cody's gonna do the job for him he's gonna write him off the TV for a little bit which is a good thing. Um, yes, but, but yeah, I, I just, I just didn't like this portion of the segment, but everything else outside of that. Good. I have no problem with, uh, but from a segment that had a blemish to another one. Well, sorry. You know what? Cause I think this is where that, um, that Andrade segment with Alex a, which was very interesting with the way that this was set up, because of course you had, Alex A interviewing Andrade yet again. And he had a little attendant this time. 
Yes, <laughs> he keeping, did. Keep it, mm-hmm. keeping his suit crisp. <laughs> Make which, sure he didn't get any lint on it. Which I like, and and I'm and I'm glad that he did not sit there with Vicky Guerrero because it's not necessary. Um, they did talk about Matt Seidel, which the, I was. What's that? It was the it was the continuity of this promo that I love so much. And yes, thank yes. God Vicky was not there because she would have ruined the continuity of this promo. Yeah. Because not only because uh, Alex A was trying to get him to talk about the forbidden door and mm-hmm. I guess possibly mentioning his match against Kenny Omega. Yeah. He looks and said, hey, let me ask you a question, Alex. Where the hell is Death Triangle? Mm. <laughs> and I loved how he asked Alex because continuity wise, Alex been with Penta. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yep. where's Death Triangle? I need to holler at them. Where they at though? Yes. And I was like, if Death Triangle and Andrade form some type of formation, yes. Yes. Mm. But if Andrade wants to fight each member of Death Triangle, yes. Either yes. either scenario. It's, that's yes. yeah, that's crazy how like every like every every option with this is like just yes. Because yes. <laughs> Penta and Andrade is like, yes. Penta, I mean, uh, uh, Phoenix and Andrade is yes. Pac yes. and Andrade is yes. yes. Them together is oh. yes. Yes. <laughs> Penta, Phoenix, and Andrade possibly kicking yes. Pac out of yes. Death Triangle is like, yes, yes because just, just for exactly. all the reasons, it's like, you can't go wrong with this. Only no, The only issue, the only issue I had with this whole thing is that when they brought up Matt Seidel, they didn't say Matt something. Right? I was I just I just I just wanted that one time. Just one time. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, well, that's um, because he had his mind set on uh Death Triangle. Well, you see, he finally uh he finally learned his his name after wrestling, <laughs> so <laughs> Probably that could be, that could have been the case. One thing about AW this week is the fact that all of their backstage segments, promos, vignettes have all like we're all on point this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but from but from that, an in ring promo that was fantastic was Hangman. Oh boy, this mm. was probably my favorite segment of the week. Same with the fans, it looks like. Uh, Because Hangman did say something very interesting, but we'll get to that part. Yeah, Hangman addressed the fact that, uh, of course, what everybody else had been saying about about him finally contending for the AEW Championship for the second time. And he addressed it, and he addressed the fact of giving Mm -hmm. praise to the Dark Order by saying that they were right. That he yeah. needs to be. That this is where he needs to be, and to forgo all of that. Of course, that puckered up the ears of the now elite, because Don Callis mm-hmm. got on the mic with the quickness and said, uh-huh. "Hold up." He said, "Hold up," and it was, and of course, again, great fucking heel work by the elite. Of course. Huge praise go to the Young Bucks because they are eating up this whole fucking heel <laughs> turn. Because yes, they are. You had they're doing their heel turn better than Kenny. Yeah, they are. Yes, but it's okay. Um, they're doing even, it because Kenny doesn't need to, though. So much so they're taking it to BTE. <clears throat> they're doing their little uh, behind the scenes shit. They actually go to the mall, like for the street fight. Mm-hmm. They showed them going uh-huh. to the mall to find clothing street clothing for their match <laughs> so i can only That's imagine what the hell what the hell they're gonna do for uh when they show us monday's episode for this week and they and they they, they are finding the most flashy and obnoxious clothing to rock at any point in fucking time yep and once again me being the person i was i am not was am i do the same thing 
so much so that you're at the point to where Don Callis said, you don't have what it takes. And then Nick gets on the mic and says, hey, you don't have what it takes. And then <laughs> Gallows, oh, Gallows, yeah, Gallows gets Gallows. on the mic and says, hey, you don't have what it takes. And then <laughs> Matt comes up and he's like, you know what? I want to say something to his face. And then he gets into the ring. And, of course, he starts to run down everything. Because And this is perfect because, again, continuity. Back when yep. they were feuding, mm-hmm. Hangman had his issues with Matt. And they were feuding back and forth because that's mm-hmm. when the whole thing mm-hmm. started. So, of course, Matt gets in his face and he starts running down everything. The friends you turn your back on. This is what you you could have been. So you're, you're not you're not one of you don't you don't have what it takes to do this. You're going to be the what 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 did he say? The um uh the, the greatest uh, the, tragedy. The greatest tragic, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the greatest tragedy. It's like um I forgot what else he said about it, but I know he 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 we were referring to his 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 alcoholism in a way. Oh yeah, he's like, he said mm-hmm. something about um and man, like judging by the smell of you, I I can see that you're oh. still a hit in the bottle or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the way he was like zooming all up to the PU, the PU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, the Bucks are straight edge. <laughs> oh, are they? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I, 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 I never knew that. Huh. Well, look at that. BT. I, I, I knew. I, well, the thing is, I know. I know. I know. Kenny is. Mm-hmm. I just didn't realize that the Bucks were too. They're good Christian boys, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Hey, it looks. Hey, look. There's a lot of good Christian boys out there who who like to partake in a little more than just the communion. Ooh, Ooh. but oh. you know, okay. Hey, shit happens. But yeah. what else happened was in this match because because Matt was daring Hangman to punch him in the face, and Hangman quickly obliged that and punched him dead in his face. And then, of <laughs> course, that's when the elite started to get into the ring or or try to, and Hangman started to fend them off. But then there was, in the back, Kenny was getting ready to, to hit Hangman with the belt, and who comes out for the save? <clears throat> None other than the Dark, dark Order. Yeah. In their entirety. Yes. Without negative one, though. Fair enough. And without the Queen Slayer. She coming back. Fair enough. I know. I know. But... She's busy making a jungle hey, man hey, right hey. now. Hey, jungle man, okay? That belongs to jungle man. <laughs> She's she busy making a jungle but, man. Uh, and then next thing you know, that's when the promo started getting even more fire. Yes. Because Kenny basically was like, no, 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 no. Let me, let me talk to him. Let me, let mm. me, let me holler at the, let me holler at him right quick. Mm-hmm. Now, Kenny... Hangman was talking, and then Kenny was like, well, "How about this? The elite versus you, and you pick few of your little friends back there in a five on five." Hangman was like, "Okay, well, if we win, not only do I get my title shot, but they get a tag team title shot." Mm-hmm. And Kenny was like, "That's not good enough because what do you lose?" And he was like, fine, if y'all lose, which I will, <laughs> not only do you lose your title shot, but they never get a title shot either. Tag team title shot. So that's the stakes of this five on five elimination, which is going to be even more interesting because I want to know who's going to be the hero on Hangman's side. Mm-hmm. But who's going to be the hero of the match? Because I want to know like... who's going to be the four he's going to choose. I did like Kenny putting a little icing on the cake, saying, uh, you're going to lose, and then you're going to run back and say, Ma, or to go see Ma, Ma and Pa, pa mm-hmm. and, and tell them about your glory days that you had while you were here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, it was what Hangman said that I thought was the most interesting thing of the whole thing. He was like, you know what, Kenny? You have a deal. Because the Dark Order don't back down from a fight. Yeah. That, and I, I, I caught that too. So with this yeah. being Hangman's final admission that he is now officially part of the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but he did say 
the Dark Order don't back down from a fight. So I'm pretty sure if I'm if I'm guessing here, he's gonna most likely choose Uno and Grayson. Which would be the the yeah, clearly. I, yeah. I think that would be the good thing to do with, with those two. I'm Especially pretty with- sure he's probably gonna pick ten. Okay. And maybe Colt. Wait, is uh, um is, is is Silver still out? That's what I was wondering myself. If Silver's gonna be finally healthy, then he may re debut as part of this five man tag. Well, I guess too, it all depends on um because they didn't set a date for this match either. So True. Oh really? Okay. No, they didn't say when it was gonna happen yet. Okay. So they could it could be one of them things to where they might try to get Silver to be back. This this might, I want to know good. who's gonna be the hero. I wonder who's gonna be the hero on Hangman side because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some odds to overcome. If there's gonna be some odds gonna... to overcome, then I'm assuming five is gonna be in there. Really. That's interesting. And five now, might, and five might it, be the it, hero finally. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you've got. Let's see here. You're gonna have Kenny, the Bucks, and the Good Brothers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's and then you're gonna, for sure gonna have Hangman and Uno and Grayson. Uh, the last two, you would, you would, you would, like any logical person would want Ten and Colt. Yes. So I'm assuming if they go with that, they then Colt would save the day. Hmm. That or they person. could fuck around and pull. Or or they could fuck around and pull. Hangman might have to beat all five. Type shit. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because yeah, it is, it is an elimination. Mm-hmm. It is an elimination. Yeah. Hmm. I see. You know what? Th- this is one of the few five-on-five matches that I'm actually anticipating. Because normally Dang. I wouldn't give a shit, but because of the implications within this match and what's on the line, it's just like, like yo, it, it's 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 must see. Mm-hmm. And for the fact of how they're going to promote this match, are they going to say the elite versus the Dark Order, or are they going to be the elite versus Hangman <clears throat> Page? And the dark order. In the dark order. Okay. And the I and the crazy we thing see. we will because the way that they're building this, which will work, because I'm I'm glad that you brought that up too, Scoot. The fact that it's not like next week and they don't know when it because yeah, but so, yeah, they didn't they didn't say when. Because I can I only think, assume next week they're gonna have a bit where yeah. they're they're just gonna have Dark Order talking about who they're gonna pick. That would be good. Isn't uh, fight for the fallen? Because isn't fight for the fallen the week after next? Yeah. Oh, if they if they set it up then, because that'll be that'll be the last week of July. Mm-hmm. And if we're setting this, if they're, if they're if they're setting it up to where Hangman is finally going to face uh, Omega, possibly what September? Yeah, um, all out. Yeah, they they can take a month to build that up. So, oh, that's that that that's good. That's good. We'll know, match. Cause uh, cause we'll know how things start to work out because Saturday is a slam anniversary. So we'll see if Kenny holds on to his belt against uh Sammy Callahan. Callahan. Oh, is this Saturday? Yeah. yeah. So we'll, uh huh. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh man, that's gonna be. Oh, we gotta. We'll have to see who uh, who shows up at Slammiversary. And hell, potentially the Good Brothers could get their tag titles back. Oh, they, they got a match for them because it's a it's a, a fatal four way. It's uh, the Good Brothers versus TJP and followed by uh, Rich Swan and uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack and um, uh, Violent by Design. Whoever's okay. the was it? I think right. I think it's Rhino and Joe Deering are the 
tag champions mm. in that group. Okay. So yeah, it's a fatal four. Um, well go going from that to look, this, this match is fine. You know, it's cool. Seen it too many times in WWE. I don't know if y'all want to talk about it, but I don't have anything to say other than okay, cool. Uh, Christian Cage and Matt Hardy. The fans other were than that look, ju- other than that look, Jungle Boy gave Christian mm-hmm. Cage when uh with uh Luchasaurus put Christian on his shoulders. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That. Oh. Uh, oh. And and I guess officially, in Helico and Jack Evans are part of HFO because when he came out with them, they said the Hardy family office. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was and weird not seeing them in, a, in in neon colors, though. And Helico's mm-hmm. been rocking, uh, been rocking the singles division. Okay, is Jack Evans no. hurt? Like, did I, did I even ask? He that he wrestled Jungle Boy a couple weeks back, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, yeah, that's all right. Well, well, yeah, uh, Christian goes over. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. After after this, uh, Britt Baker had her segment. She came out. And of course, <clears throat> over like motherfucking Rover, but no Reba slash Rebel, Rebel, Rebel slash Reba. Um, the only thing, I mean, look, Brit's promo, good all the time. The one mm-hmm. thing she said that made my ears pucker up was the, the, the nice little jab she gave at Vicky Guerrero. She said, Vicky, you will always be relevant because you have a last name that's going to keep you relevant. Mm -hmm. but Nyla Rose Mm -hmm. will not be that without this title. Look. Bars. Bars. (laughs) Bars. And of course, I'm I'm, I'm assuming, so are, are, because I can't remember if they said they're going to, if it's a tables match or they're going to have like a, uh, a hardcore match. I think it's a regular match. Okay. Oh, she oh she was just talking about the fact she put her through. Oh, yeah, I think it's regular. You think you should? Oh, okay. you, you think I'm you think I'm afraid of being put through a table? <clears throat> it's like, you know, you if, if you have forgotten, I was put through a table. You know, hit with chairs, went through thumbtacks, and I came out of that even stronger. Mm-hmm. And now I have this motioning to the the AEW Women's Championship to the point to where. Even after the fact, even after next week, I'm still leaving with this wrapped around my waist. And even if I did happen to lose this, which I'm not, I'm still going to be Dr. Britt Baker and in unison with the fans, D-M-D. Like, she's not losing this title for a while. (laughs) There, there is nobody no. right now no. that can take this title off of her that would legitimately make sense. Period. Statlander. Period. Not even Statlander. Not yet. Well, I don't know. Oh, I mean, not yet, but it's coming. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree it's it is. Coming. Um, But I don't see her losing that title at least for like until like 2022. Yeah. Now it may happen that. like at, at the end of the year, possibly, but with the way things are going, because now with fans getting back in attendance, they're eating this shit up like crazy. Twenty twenty two. Um, I can see that. Uh, but what but is from it, there, full gear? That's their last uh, uh, pay per view. Uh, um, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Outside of them um, possibly having like a um a, a TV special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, technically, dude. Moxley did lose it on the TV special. Yeah, he did. Oh, uh, fucking uh, winter is coming. That's what it yeah, was. He lost winter, it. winter is coming. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, for, from there we get um, <clears throat> pretty much an exhibition between um, surprisingly Sammy Guevara of all people against uh, Wheeler Utah, Tech, which Texas wrestler man. Well, no, no, I, that that's not surprising that hey, Sammy was on the uh, card. Uh. Mr. Jaeger. Oh, Mr. Who Scoop. is Wheeler Yuta? <laughs> He's from uh, New Japan. Uh, mm-hmm. Part of okay. He was a uh, he was one of their young lions, but 
Um, now he's kind of getting some, he's become like a more protege for uh, the best friends, I guess. Uh, I, I guess they had to throw him somewhere since uh, Trent's out. So just kind of yeah. lined up. So is he officially uh, part of the best friends now? I mean, according to commentators, uh, he's going to be under their guidance at the very least. Yeah. Um, I didn't okay. know myself until uh, yesterday, to be honest. Uh, it was it was interesting because he'd been in the singles in Dark and Elevation, but he, uh, I mean, he'd been winning too, but I guess they wanted to just bring him up. Maybe you see, this J- was the thing. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying maybe New Japan was trying to push him more. Well, this was the thing that confused me because it was like they were talking him up on the commentary, but it was like, mm-hmm. why would you put him against somebody that he's going to clearly lose against? Yeah, and that yeah. was my thing. <clears throat> like, clearly, Sammy was going to win this match. So, I don't know. Yeah, and then, but that's one of the reasons why I chose to talk about this match over, you know, Christian and Matt Hardy because, again, Sammy's somebody who's over. And, I mean, of course, Texas-wise, because the Texas boy is going to be over. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, I like the fact mm-hmm. that they do these exhibition matches like this because they're still putting people who's, again, in some type of position within the company on the card and allowing somebody else to showcase. And I'm glad they're doing it to somebody who is – on the rise rather than somebody who's already established like a Kenny Omega hangman page, you know, bucks, Cody, you know, et cetera, et cetera, because this, him losing to Sammy Guevara makes more sense in this, in this situation, because they could potentially both be at the top of a W's card down the line. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, where, where it was surprising to me that Sammy would be in this situation because of what he's been going through with um, the pinnacle, you know, Yes. but you know, again, I'm not mad at this match. Um, no, there were, there was no shenanigans. This is pretty much literally just an exhibition. Uh, from there, we had a, uh, a promo from Chris Jericho where he talked about, you know, the, these trials, obviously. And then he brought up Hercules and how Hercules went through his trials and how he came out of it. But Jericho is more of a God in a way. So he's going to come out of this completely fine. And we finally get the first trial of, uh, of Jericho, so to speak from MJF, because it is via going to be a jumping. Yeah. A jumping be a jumping um, <laughs> by him and Sean, well, Sean Spears hitting him with the chair. And, and throat of all places, like Jesus. Right? And Jericho did make, make make a nice little sound from that, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, but MJF did uh unveil what his first trial would be, and that's against Sean Spears in a pseudo chair match, where the only person able to use a chair is Sean Spears, where Jericho would not be able to. Uh, this was surprising because. You know, I thought the one thing that made sense is what we talked about last week where Ali Davis had kind of stated that it would be cool for him to go against the inner circle. Mm -hmm. But I think that can still happen now. True. And I I think they might be mixing it up a little bit. I think they might end up doing it to where he does all these trials with other people here and there. And then he might have the last trial be like Jericho in a handicap match against like the rest of the inner circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh who knows? Uh, but I, I'm not mad at this. I could be. I wish I, I, I wish uh, MJF would have just basically did it the way when uh, Dolph Ziggler was trying to get the title from uh, Drew McIntyre, mm. and they let uh, Dolph pick the stipulation. And the stipulation yeah. was, "I have extreme rules, but not you." Yeah. Uh Oh, it would have been a lot better if, if I mean, I understand the whole chair thing, but the problem is, is that it would have just sounded better. It's like, hey, this is a chairs match, but you can't use a chair, <laughs> but Spears can. It would have been better if you would have said it like that. Yeah. Like, this is a chairs match. You have to compete under normal rules, but Spears, you know, can do whatever. Uh, yeah, and I and I'm and I'm glad that they're doing it like this. Um, because again, it makes sense. It's 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 
very snarky and smarmy of uh, of, of MJF to pull this shit, mm-hmm. you would expect it. And Sean Spears is probably the best person to start this off because he's he's still going to come out looking strong in this because he's going to end up hurting Jericho. Jericho's going to win this, obviously. And then right, and then gave Jericho one more whack on the arm. Yeah, which was mm-hmm. still good. And going from something good again to something else, I could care less about because you know it's it was. Could you very, care less? Yes, I could. You care could less. care. You could care less. Mm-hmm. I could care yeah. less about it. Be only because, like, I just knew what what this was going to be. Because they they painted it all over the fucking uh, commentary, which the fact of Yuka Sakazaki versus Penelope Ford, and they they and they they clearly stated their return of Yuka Sakazaki. So that clearly told you who the winner was going to be in this match. Yeah, and. Nothing against either one of these two. It's just the fact that when I see it coming, especially in AEW's women's division, it's hard for me to care sometimes. Unless yeah, it's, and that's how I felt with this match. Yeah, unless it's like prominent people within the women's division, like the the top, you know, five to six women that they that they promote more. If it's anybody other than those women, it's hard for me to care because it's like what how how much does does this matter like on the ranking does it really matter that much and mm-hmm. yeah so yuka uh, sakazaki go well, ahead no before she's been winning in dark and elevation so this does not exactly hurt her to take this loss from yuka sakazaki okay especially because it's her debut back but like so if you're looking at it from a win loss perspective like she can take this loss okay okay Good, good. Uh, you know yeah. what? And I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up, Jaeger, because now I want to see the what new the ranking. Stand, yeah, the, as far as like the women's division, before we get into the last two things we have to talk about. Mm. Um. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. Nala Rose, Ty, uh, Ty Conti, Donda Rosa, Chris Statlander, and Hikaru Shida. Mm-hmm. So, um. There's a part of me that wish I could you could see like the the rest of the rankings and not just the top five, so you can kind of see where other people stand. Wow, interesting. What's that? Ethan Page is number five on the men's side. I would like yeah. to see him versus Miro. Which uh, you know it's how apropos that is, Jaeger, because that is one of the last one of the last two things we have to talk about, mm-hmm. and that is mother. Fucking mirror. Hero. No, 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 no. Gold on the mic. Oh, the, the redeemer. Oh, the redeemer. <clears throat> Look, the motherfucking it, redeemer, Miro. Promo game aside. Promo Oof. game aside. The fact that you can take this character, and of course, the old saying goes, is that the best villain. In any Mm. iteration, whether it be movies, comic books, storyline, whatever, are the ones who believe that they are doing something right. In Miro's Mm -hmm. promo, he clearly stated that he is the hero of his story. This is just in the promo itself. Thank you, Loki. He's Thanos. Outside of that. The fact, and this this is the cherry on top of this, outside of him calling himself the Redeemer, he clearly changed the strap color on his title from black to white. Yep. The intricacies. And changed the title plate to green. This, look. A little green I, ribbon. I didn't yeah. even notice that. Yeah. Oh, shit. The ribbon's that oh. red is green. Uh huh. You look. Zero. <laughs> and the fact in the in the whole promo, the vignette showed him taking out people as if he was taking out villains, and him just doing mm-hmm. the right thing. And he's like, "I'm going like he, like he like him going through his own trials and challenges. Like I went through so much to get here. Like I've taken down so many people." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I fucking love it. Yes. I now, fucking to love even, it. To even give more of the context, 
how the little strip on the title was green because they like, you know the old TNT. Mm-hmm. The Redeemer letters were green, the same wait, color. The re- wait, is as... it on there? No, the the name Redeemer isn't on the title, but oh, okay. the color that he had the Redeemer is that's the color of the of the strip that's on the title. Ugh. But yeah, fucking love it. Now, I will say this. The TNT title will become special if anybody who wins it, they get to customize it like that. Yes. That would yeah. be a cool little touch to the TNT title. If they, What's it yeah. going to be called again once they switch to TVS? I think it's still going to be they the TNT. They still TNT. Yeah. Okay. They never that, said they were going to switch to TVS title or nothing. So that, That'll be a good thing because it'll it'll have that same essence as, it, as the um, – was it what? The uh, – the inter- was it Intercontinental title? Oh, well, the Intercontinental There's title one. and the World title when they changed it up, where Stone Cold and The Rock both had their titles, where he had the Brahma mm. title and Stone Cold uh-huh. had the Smoke Soul. So, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. All fucking for it. All fucking for it. But from that, we get to uh, the main event, which the, the glorified ca- – this was a casket match, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, WWE, yes. if y'all want to copyright this shit again, because y'all did the shit last week and copyright an AEW video for, for the Shield shit, Masses. which didn't make any sense because that was from another YouTube video who you challenged the YouTube fine. gods. I, and I will continue to challenge them. <laughs> I will continue. I welcome it. I'll Same play thing. by the I'll play by the rules. But I'll still continue to do what I want within reason. <laughs> obviously, I'm still going to talk shit. I'm going down with the ship every single time. But YouTube, Ooh. YouTube, this was a YouTube video that I put up there. So if that video can be perfectly fine, how the fuck can ours not be the fine? If, if, if we're referencing a YouTube video, damn it, it said WWE copyright anyway. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what does matter? What does matter is this coffin slash casket match, because it's the same rules as a casket match. But the one thing I have to talk about this cliche shit that they did in the very beginning when they brought out this casket. Why was it that you had the most emo looking dude in the front carrying right. not only black roses but his hair all down? It's why? Why was that necessary? Not huh, AEW. Hey, got to get an edgy Paul Bearer, man. <laughs> Give us. Yeah, the, exactly. Look, I'm fine with edgy. Druids. I'm fine with Druids. Whatever, but why you got to like the? He was the only one. Everybody else looked like they were like up and coming wrestlers. He was the only emo looking dude, and you put him in the front, holding the black roses. How cliche yeah. you gonna be? Anyway, very but, apparent. <laughs> but you had Ethan Page come out first, obviously as smug and as confident as he wanted to be. Then you had Darby come out on a skateboard finally because they had they had a rant that was actually going to support him in his skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't waste any time. He pulled he pulled the old uh, the old Bret Hart against. Goldberg with but instead of having the front plate he had a back plate because he barreled he mm-hmm. barreled himself into Ethan Page and then revealed that he had the uh the metal black back plate on and then did a coffin drop from the second rope onto Ethan Page. Mm-hmm. And should have kept that, that on. He probably opinion. should have because it probably would have helped him. I thought about that too. But uh after that he he rolled out to open the casket and with the coffin. See, there it is again. To open the coffin, and Scorpio Sky came out. Which, cliche enough, but that was pretty much... Well, he was in the casket, yeah. Yeah, and that that, Uh that was... That was the... Oh, fine, he was in the coffin. Coffin, (laughs) sorry, he was in the coffin. You know, there's a a funny parallel that I noticed from NXT to uh, to, uh, AEW here, is that What's her name? Redhead chick that just came out or fought a 
She fought the uh, what the hell was? I'm so sorry. Gigi I'm Dolan. Names Gigi the... Dolan. Yeah, thank you, Gigi Dolan. She came out with a black rose. Yes, she did. Huh? And then yeah, she did. Not only not only do we have a edgy pallbearer with black roses, the casket itself. Got, oh, damn it! <laughs> the co- <laughs> the coffin itself uh, had black roses in it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, all the on the inside too. And Scorpio um, Sky came out the the coffin with a black rose yeah, in his mouth. Was, yeah, okay, I, I knew that is why I saw it. it was, yeah. Scorpio. Only because I can make the joke. He was a black guy with a he was a black guy instead of a black coffin with a black rose. Yeah. Was he wearing a black shirt? <laughs> I don't think he was wearing a shirt. I think he was wearing black jeans. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was pretty much the, the cue for Sting to come out because you can't have this match without having Sting come out. But it was okay. They gave him a small bit of time to give him you know, a little pop. The, yeah, game pop had his moment at uh, at, uh, at ringside, and of course within in the with with around the fans, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. him and Scorpio fought off camera after that, and then went off into the sunset, which um, which allowed uh, Ethan Page and Darby Allen to continue their match. This was the only sh- only problem the only problem that I had with this shit was this whole picture in picture because this was one of the times where. You had the good shit happen on fucking pitcher and pitcher. Yep. And I'm sitting there like, why, 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 why did y'all waste this shit on pitcher and pitcher? Like the fact that the, this was, and this was the only time that they actually went into the fans during that whole match, and all of that, the majority of that was all on pitcher and pitcher. Hey, For answer sure. me just one question: When did they break the bottom turnbuckle? Uh, when they came back. Uh, from from wrestling and with the fans or wrestling uh, outside of where the fans were, mm-hmm. Ethan Page had grabbed the pole and he was uh, unscrewing the bo- the bottom turnbuckle. Okay, okay. And then that's uh, which, of course, glad you brought that up, Scoot, because then Ethan Page proceeded to use the hook on that uh, on that detached turnbuckle and grab Darby Allen's chain and wrench him back. So much so where the velocity of it ripped the chain and slammed Darby back to the mat. Hard. Hard. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then from that, after he uh, put the stairs, the steel steps into the ring, I was worried. That, oh, my God. That I, damn. I, uh, the, the, that uh, damn ego's edge. Oh, I, my look, God. This. This. this this thing could have gone eighty percent wrong and only twenty percent right, and luckily, oh boy, they fell into the <laughs> realm of that twenty percent right because Ethan Page threw him to where he didn't hurt himself with that opening within the within the still steps, which I was like, "Whoo, man!" So, kudos to him on doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then from there. Darby took that same hook that he was wrenched down with that broke his chain and stuck it in Ethan's mouth and started pulling at his cheek. Yes. As, as JR called it, he started fish hooking him. <laughs> and, and fish, fish hooking, hooking him. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know where Ethan Page got busted open, but he clearly got busted open at some point. So I'm thinking yeah. it was a blade job. Oh, okay. And it was when uh, Darby did the uh, little spot where he kicked the steps and kicked Ethan out of the ring. Ah, oh, gotcha. And then he goes okay. into the casket and all that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, from uh, from there, uh, it was getting close to the end of the match. I can't remember what happened after they had went in there, but then he got out of it, got out of the, uh, the coffin. But – to fast forward. They fought outside the ring for a second. That's mainly what it was. They just had a little back and forth. Like okay. First of all, they were both in the coffin and then they were yes. just exchanging blows and then uh, Ethan Page like knocked him out of there and then they were fighting outside the ring for a second. Oh, and then after that, that's when um, Darby was uh, wrenching his eyes and then bit his forehead. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. um, Ethan fought him off and then Darby had grabbed the skateboard and then jumped on top of him where... Yep. Ethan yep. fell into the uh, the coffin, 
And then, of course, Darby hit him and then closed it. But Darby wasn't done because even after his music played and he was uh, announced as the victor, he said, fuck all that. Because all the shit you've been talking and all that bravado you've been showing. I guess I guess some of your your predictions rubbed off on me because I did call this spot. About him uh, doing the um, mm-hmm. coffin drop. Th- oh, yeah, you did say coffin drop, coffin through, drop the through the coffin. coffin. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah. I mean, I didn't think he was going to do it this way, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, like, I was my definitely man said, Look, my man's woke up and chose violence that day. <laughs> and and, he, and here's the thing he about it. Said, fuck, he just said, fuck it. <laughs> and here's the thing about that whole situation because normally, like, if we take it to the whole WWE aspect. Anytime they have a casket match, they have a full casket that's all lined with with cushions mm-hmm. and everything. This was just a box that was put together with wood and then just thrown out to ring. So here's the problem I have mm-hmm. with that shit because it's like Darby just chooses dangerous spots to have because at one he could have he could have easily been, you know, punctured or skewered by any piece of wood or yep. outlining of like whatever. And even when it was open and there's no lining that you see the wood that's protruding out on the inside of it. Mm-hmm. So when he decided to do the fucking coffin drop, it was like zero fucks given kind of how, you know, Carrie and cross didn't have pockets. Darby Allen had pockets, but said, fuck the pockets. I still got no fucks to give and coffin yeah, drop right into the coffin. And he planted himself perfectly in that because to, to, comment on the parts that were protruding you saw as it broke they were just if he had hit it on the side at all he would have probably had a nice little nice little incision or a puncture of some type yeah this the thing that this the thing that gets that'll make me nervous as ethan page you have to sit there and kind of be like okay he's shifting it so that must Mm -hmm. mean he's about to get ready to do it yeah okay. okay let me let me kind of because you don't know <laughs> exactly <here. laughs> what he's doing. Ethan Page was because in the fetal he position see him. <laughs> Ethan Page he couldn't see position. Darby at all he was in the fetal position when Darby would like once once that whole shit crashed you seen him just like curled up on on one side of the fucking coffin and that's all I was like yeah, yeah that's probably the best way you could do that because laying flat on your back and then having that come at you uh-uh. ain't the way <laughs> but all. uh but yeah but that's that's how fighter fest night one went off the air with that shit which i'm not mad at fighter fest night one it was still a good show no. No. everything but um but yeah but since that's it we got anybody got any final thoughts on fighter fest night one or what y'all expect from fighter fest night two i'm just happy to have fans Oh fuck! Because yes. once again, sold out. H-E-B once again, because once again, having fans let us know that absolute Ricky Starks is over. So indeed, in fucking deed, happy for fans. What you got, Jaeger? And the fans are and the fans are waiting for Hangman to get that title. Oh shit! Oh yeah, all of us are. Shit. <laughs> then that cowboy uh, shit. Well. You know, a pair, a pair, oh, go, go, Jaeger. I was going to say, two echo just there. Cowboy shit. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see who the hell gets picked from the rest of the Dark Order. I'm mm-hmm. ready to see Britt Baker and Nyla Rose. And I want to see what Andrade has to say for Death Triangle. Yes. Um, more Miro. Period. Oh, always. Period. I mean, just, yeah, definitely. Just more Miro. That that's that's it right there. S- simple, simple. Said and done. But uh, but with with the, with that simplicity in order, Scoot, where can these people find you? Oh, up there. It way if, up there. If you don't know what that is, that that's not not the pinnacle. That's the scootical. Because when you think you at the pinnacle. When you think you're on top, just look up. And you'll see me just waving down at you. Because <laughs> you thought. 
You thought you were on top. But yeah, now. Yep. Not at Scootical all. School is always up there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm. But of course, the socials, they've been scrolling down here. So oh, sure. for you numb schools that can't read, <laughs> I'll go ahead and let you know. IG, Twitter, not Twitter. <laughs> IG, Twitch, TikTok, uh, YouTube at the Scooter Ray. Then of course, Less than Stealthy Ninjas. Same spots I just named. Mm. Mm. Spotify, Google, Podcasts, Anchor. Like how we used to say, we're Googleable. Googleable. We're Googleable. Mm. You, you, if you really want to find us, we're Googleable. But once again, it's been scrolling down there at the bottom the whole <laughs> time. But it has. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let absolute Jaeger bomb bastard call at y'all though. Cause yeah, I do it every time now. Um, you know, the, uh, the cr- as Scoo just said, the crawl is showing you. It- it'll get around to me in a second. But out oh, there it is. See, there you go right there. Um, yep, yep. IG, TikTok, Twitchish, little, little eye Twitchish. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Twitter and Xbox, PlayStation, all that fun shit. Yep, yep. Holler at me. Try and get me into some games. You'll know where I'd be. Oh, and oh, ladies, man. just check your DMs. Check. Now, when I say no and you feeling down about yourself because you don't get to hear this silky smooth ver- voice in person. Oof. Mm. And you need a little pick me up. We can need only to pick point up you. Your feelings, you know. I, I can only point you in one direction. Oh, oh, this direction. Oh, that's oh, oh, that guy. Oh, I mean, if 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 they just so happen to need that positivity in their life, all they got to do is look mm. for lifestyle one up. For that lifestyle one up, they need that daily dose. You can always check it at all your podcast listening platforms. And of course, hashtag road to 600. Road to 600. It'll be there in like uh, a week, uh, a week maybe, I think. Counting uh, down yeah, seven like days. I, I, I guess we count down. It, it, it's happening. But yes, but it, if you the podcast, you can check it on your socials, your IGs, your Twitters, your TikToks, getting that dose of positivity each and every morning, Monday through Friday. But of course, if you want to shoot the shit, you want to come take down the Prince of Predictions whenever he's available. You can always find it on Lip Diesel at your IGs, your Twitters, your TikToks, Twitches, the YouTubes, all that good shit. But regardless of that, you can always find all three of us here. The good old triple threat brain trust a tag on the YouTubes, giving you all the recaps, reviews, predictions, and wrestling news and our opinions. But I bid you all adieu, as Kenny Omega would say. Give it too sweet to my bros. Bada, 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 boom. And as always, you beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mother effers, until you hear and see us next time. Tag the fuck out. Out. Ah.